gets me through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. Oh, what about this? The Arj Barker controversy. So basically, if you're not up to speed, what has happened is a mother has brought a nine-month-old baby into his comedy show at the International Comedy Festival in Melbourne. And the baby wasn't crying as such, but gurgling. And Arj has argued the baby was distracting. Grizzling. Yes. It's been described as. Yeah. So in that moment, he said, listen, I can't focus on what I'm trying to deliver for all the other patrons at my comedy show. So he has asked her to leave. This is a real conflicting one, isn't it? It is a lot. And uh, I mean, late yesterday afternoon, speaking to a lot of my mates as well. And I feel like very much it depends, one, if you've got kids or not. Yep. Uh, but also, two, how maybe tolerant you are with kids as well. Because a lot of people, I know a lot of people who just hear even the slightest sound out of a child anywhere. And they're like, no, get rid of that child. Yeah. I can't imagine having a nine-month-old baby and being in a space where I'm like, I would like to go to a comedy show oh my with, God. with said baby. Do you know? Like, I actually can't think of anything worse. Ridiculous. So we live in West Croydon and we it's an absolute treat to sometimes go to Queen Street Cafe. Yeah. Uh, went there on the weekend, but two times before that, we got to the front before one of the kids started playing up. We said, we're not going in there. We're not yeah. risking this. And you can tell the vibe by a kid. We're just not going to go in there. Yeah. Because they're going to cause a scene. Well, I mean, it's, oh, I don't know. It's a difficult one. It was strictly age 15 plus. So how the child got into the venue is his argument. It's like, it shouldn't, shouldn't have been there in the first place. Mm. You're talking, um, what, fake ID? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Baby just <laughs> flushed it on the way in. Yeah. Yeah, you're it's good. In you go. Small 15-year-old, but hey. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. As a comedian, it would interrupt your train of thought, I'd imagine. But I do have to say this. We've Well, I've interviewed Arj Barker over the years quite a few times when he's come here for Fringe, and I've been less than impressed. Right, okay. By, by his demeanour and his manner. Did you bring... In, in fact, he's a bit of a tool. When, when was this? Did you bring one of your uh, babies in at the time? <laughs> it just triggered him. I was it? trying to breastfeed, <laughs> and Arj was like, you can't interview me. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, text line's open, 0400 919 919, or you can give us a call, 13 24 10. Where do you sit on this one? Because uh, immediately yesterday I was like, well, uh, come on, Arge. It's not that well, bad, is it? But, but since all the facts were sort of half lined up and apparently made a bit of a joke, which was quite funny when the baby was grizzly, he said, oh, look, the baby's clearly saying, get me out of here. Yeah. I'm not enjoying it. We do have Arge here trying to explain exactly why he did what he did doesn't take much to distract an audience, you know, when they're watching a show and, and, you know, I've worked on these jokes and there's timing and there's pauses. And so I made this decision. It wasn't easy because I knew it was really awkward for me, to be honest. I said, I'm, you know, I'm really sorry, but, you know, the baby can't stay. I shouldn't have been in that position because the, the show is a 15 plus show. So he has doubled down. Big yeah, time. he definitely did. He's not leaving any sort of space for any other direction, but yeah, I made the right call. But I, I do think um, comedians in this space would have an opportunity just to laugh and have a joke with it. And I don't know. I don't know if he did the right thing or not. Mm. A lot of other mums got up and walked out in solidarity for this woman. Yeah. Um, but yeah, whether she would have, she should have taken the baby in the first place is the question, I guess. Very, very interesting stuff. Mm. Um, all right, give us a call, 13 24 10. Your thoughts on this one, because this is a genuine... I reckon yesterday, when everyone I was speaking to, it was absolutely 50-50. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people yesterday straight away had their opinions, but then when you find out that it was strictly 15 plus, yeah. I think that changes everything. And if you call us on 13 24 10 and there's a baby crying in the background, we will hang up on you. <laughs> Immediately, Yeah, we can't take that distraction. Mm. I've always said as well, Joe, it's mm. um, three things that you just cannot take babies to anymore. Of course, Bucks parties. No. Don't take your baby to a Bucks parties. Um, also, paintballing. No. Just don't do it. But also, bungee jumping. <laughs> Leave them at home. <laughs> Unless you have to breastfeed your baby at a Bucks party. It's just <laughs> a strange one, isn't it? I've just worked out exactly what that could mean. Why is there a mother at a Bucks party? I'm not sure. Don't know. You're telling the story. <laughs> Got to... Helena, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good. What are your thoughts on this one? Did he do the right thing um, or not? Uh, look, I don't think the, the mum and the baby should have got in, firstly, but uh, I'm a mum of five and I wouldn't personally take my children <laughs> to a show uh, because of that distraction. So given that, saying that, I think that it could have been dealt with in a different way, like publicly humiliating someone seems like it's the issue rather than the baby crying and grizzling. So 
I think that, you know, if they had a marketing team perhaps, that they could have discreetly had a conversation with, with mum yeah. um, and asked, asked her to quietly leave. But if it was me, I would have, as soon as the baby was unsettled, made myself, excused myself and, and went out. I think that's the thing. That's the, the, the minute that you get your baby gets grizzly and starts interrupting other people. I try and remove my children from that situation. Mm. But at the same time, I sort of think she needs to be applauded for getting out and about and trying to go about her her life Yeah, with a small child. Yeah, yeah and, and perhaps she didn't have a babysitter option. So yeah. that's, you know, fair, fair call. But I guess it's up to if they're saying it's 15 plus, they shouldn't have allowed her to get in in the first place. Or if she did get in, they should have honoured that and allowed her to stay. But... Mm. As soon as baby's crying, I think you know, as a parent, you would excuse yourself. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Helene. Can you shut that baby up, please? In the back? <laughs> <laughs> I've got two in the back at the moment. <laughs> we did warn you. We said he's got a baby in the background. This is absolutely perfect. <laughs> we would cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> Helene, this is the thing you so much for calling. No worries, thank you. Um, let's hear from Arch Barker. He doubled down. It doesn't take much to distract an audience, you know, when they're watching a show. And, and, you know, I've worked on these jokes and there's timing and there's pauses. And so I made this decision. It wasn't easy because I knew it was really awkward for me, to be honest. I said, I'm, you know, I'm really sorry, but, you know, the baby can't stay. I shouldn't have been in that position because the, the show is a 15 plus show. Mm, it's, it's, it's a solid point. It's a it, 15 plus show. Well, yeah, I get that. I don't know. I just, uh, we need to normalise breastfeeding though. I think that's part of the issue here. It's, women should feel comfortable in most situations, but whether that baby should have been at the comedy show, debatable. Well, um, does it matter if it's breastfeeding or not? I think it was more so that it was making noise. Mm. Yeah. Bit of column A, bit of column B. Mm. Jared, thoughts on this one? As a father of four, look, I understand everyone wants to get out and all for this lady for having the power to go out and enjoy herself. But I think you really got to choose your venues that you're going to and the things you're going to, it's clearly listed as a 15-plus show. Like, did did they sneak the child in? Like, I don't know. Is it the same thing as sneaking a bottle of booze into a <laughs> festival or something? Like, how... how it, and, and to defend Arch, like, should it really have been his job to make the mother and child leave? Shouldn't it have been the doorman? Like, yeah. he's copping all this black. And look, I don't know the guy personally. Don't know what he's like. I've never done interviews like you, Joe. But it's, yeah, should it have really been put in that position where he had to do it in the middle of his show anyway? All, should it have been the doorman that should have done the job properly? Very like? good points. Very good questions, Joe. And also standing on stage, being a comedian, delivering jokes. It's a lot. Like, that's my worst nightmare, oh my having to do that. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm talking on air to you, and I'm petrified. Oh, like, you're okay, Jared. Of, like, people, like, I, a, I completely understand, like... done a very good job, Jared. a paid professional. I'm just a truck driver, like... <laughs> no, 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 no. I think you could veer into the direction of radio if you wanted to, Jared. That's how good your performance has been this morning. Jared, thank you so much for your call. <laughs> have a great day, Trish. Should that baby have been in the venue? No. Well, stop, no. Um, look, I'm a mother of three, and I think my husband and I are amazing parents. Um, all our children are in our 20s now, but we had three under five. And if we were fortunate enough with having no family, if we were fortunate enough to have a date night, I would do so much research and homework to make sure that my husband and I went out and had a great night together so that we were away from children. <laughs> and if you, if you want to if you want to advocate and, and turn it into this, oh my God, it's about breastfeeding, Hey, yeah, we're all entitled to breastfeed wherever we want, whenever we want. But that's not what this is about. Yeah. That show was 15 plus. And I don't even like Arch Barker, <coughs> but I think he was well within his rights. But it's like the gentleman said before me, really, come on, guys. Mm. Was it Arch's problem to deal with? No. It should have been everybody that set up that show, that sold the tickets, that let them in the door, yada, 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 yada. So... I mean, hell, three kids under five, I was dying for a night out without the kids. Yeah. This, this is a thing. I can't think of anything worse than going to a comedy show with a baby with a nine-month-old. Yeah. Like, surely if you're having a night out, have a Stressful. night out. Stressful. If you can get a babysitter. Stressful. Um, Trish, we just spoke to you for 45 seconds, and what we can absolutely confirm is you're someone who gets straight to the point. We very much appreciate that. <laughs> yes. Thanks for having me on, guys. Oh, you're so welcome, Trish. Absolute legend. Um, Ken sent us a text. Give us your thoughts on this. So 0400 919 919 or give us a call 13 24 10. The debate will continue. Here's what you're waking up to, Adelaide. News. In the news today. Breaking news. Breaking news. With Tom.
in the news today. Your post snooze news. Top stories of the day. We need to go round the room. Uh, in breaking news, Abby wanted to be a part of Bardo. <laughs> oh, did you, Abs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was my lifelong dream. Never give up, okay? I thought, you Never know, give up. You could be um, East, whatever they're called. 17. <laughs> East 17. And I could be Bardo and we could, you know, come together and be pop stars together. We could collaborate. We mm. could. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, let's What's in the on. news? <laughs> uh, if you need some motivation to follow your goals and your dreams, because let's be honest, no dream is too big, Yep. Uh, then look no further than Adelaide's uh, Catherine Bennell Pegg. So oh she God. has become the first person under the Australian flag to graduate from astronaut training. Wow. wow. This is massive. It's like, crazy. absolutely massive. So if you remember back in 2022, she was one of six candidates who were picked to go and do training over in the um, European Space Agency. See, she's now fully qualified. So what that means is that she can she's endorsed or she can go on space flights and she can go on missions to the International Space Station. So she's a mother of two. She's 39. She's from Adelaide. The nicest person that you probably will ever meet. She's lovely. Um, and she said, you know, it's an absolute dream to represent Australia. But she's also said to all the young women out there across the world, don't dream too small. Yeah. You know, if you want to go and be an astronaut, go and be an astronaut. Incredible. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. And you talk about your role models, you know, (laughs) please forget TikTok, Instagram, influencers, all that sort of stuff. There's a woman who's going to travel into space. Yeah, Yeah. exactly right. I think that's what we need our young people to, you know, don't look at Kim Kardashian. Yes. Look at the women who are in your backyard doing amazing things. 100%. Look at Brian from E17. (laughs) Killed it. All right. Tickle with that little tickle on his Listen, face. Listen, let it go. Can you imagine our collaborations? I reckon they would be oh, quite good, Hazy. They'd rock, wouldn't they? Oh, goodness. Straight to number one. <laughs> Um, speaking of news, oh my goodness, this is all over the news at the moment. US comedian Arj Barker has faced backlash and uh, even reported walkouts at his show um, after he asked a mum and her seven-month-old baby to leave his comedy festival show on Saturday night. I'm really torn on this one. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But basically, the baby wasn't crying, but it was grizzling, and the mother decided to give it a quick feed to keep the baby quiet. And Arj stopped down his show because he said he couldn't concentrate and it was interrupting his flow. Um, so asked the mother to leave the theatre. So this emerged uh, yesterday afternoon. Yeah. And uh, particularly Channel 7, we spoke about this a lot. Yeah. And in depth. And clearly, and we'll talk about it, like you said, after 7 o'clock, we'd love you to get involved as well, 13, 24, 10, but... The opinions differ in terms of whether you've got kids or not. Yes. That's what it feels like. Yeah, 100%. It's like there's two types of people. Like when you've got a baby crying on the plane, there's the person that tries to help <laughs> and there's the one that sits there and just stares the parents down like shut your baby up. Yeah. It's a real divisive one, isn't it? Yeah, like you're choosing for the baby just to be an absolute nuisance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Trust me, my kids, when they're a nuisance, mm. I, I hate them more than you do. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly when you're in a public space. Exactly. Oh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. News. Newsy. Oh, yeah, so what about uh, the World Anti-Doping Authority? WADA is potentially about to go absolutely berserk on these Chinese swimmers. What, 23 medals potentially stripped? Yeah, this one's a big one. So they're going to hold a press conference after it came out that 23 uh, Chinese athletes were still allowed to go to the Tokyo Olympics and compete. And they all, I think all of them nearly got medals or gold medals or whatever. So they could be stripped of them because they were tested and they had a banned substance in their systems. Yeah, wow. Mm. Wait, so I'm not across this story at all. Is this retrospective? This has happened in the past or these are current swimmers? Because it's come up, obviously we've got Paris Olympics coming up, so there's been a big, like, well, hang on a sec, it's only just come out, why are we only hearing about this now? These They shouldn't have medals, etc, etc. Yeah, right. Seriously. I mean, the message here is just be better at masking them. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) I'm joking. I don't don't take performance enhancing I drugs. I think I can't it's a message. Remember what Olympics it was because obviously I've lived through so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> but there was. What was Rome like, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> the first one? <laughs> it's amazing. It was the first one was in 1908. <laughs> I, w- I wore my loincloth. <laughs> And your coconuts on your on my boots. That was a naked Olympics too, I think. Yeah. By the way, and then I had a wreath around my head. It was beautiful. Was I loved every that. moment yeah, of what, the Rome Olympics. What was Caesar like? <laughs>
Yes, this is definitely retrospect. So yeah. um, watch this space. We'll see yeah. what happens. Anyway, I had the point to that story yeah. and I've lost it. No, can you remember there was one Olympics and there was a Chinese female swimmer standing on the podium? Yes. And everyone was like, you've got to be joking. Man, her lats were touching her hips. I know. She was a brick shooter. <laughs> she was huge. And everyone's like, something is going on here. And then, yeah, Something. surprise, surprise, they got done. Yeah, wow. Well, mm. What a revelation. Not I mean, clean Aussie athletes. Good right. on some people, though, because after a few lemonades, I can't even get on a bike and ride. So, <laughs> yeah, <not laughs> good on them. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's your post snooze at news. Jodes, you know me, I'm really trying to find my way as a parent. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's hit, sometimes it's miss. Yes. It's mainly miss. Yep. And if it wasn't for my wife, Cara, Doing 99% of the work in terms of parenting, I would be absolutely you know what. Oh, look, I don't want you to talk yourself down, but you're probably spot on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, let's just be honest. Let's just be honest for a second. I would be laid face down in a drain pool somewhere with our car. I know. She's your <laughs> saviour, absolute saviour. And while that's happening, the kids are eating ice cream for breakfast. Yep. That's not good, is it? No. Um, I clearly swear too much in front of the kids. Uh-oh. And bless Cara, she says, we swear too much in the kids and we need to change our ways, but it's it's me. Right. It's 100% me. Yeah, so you, much you don't so. just swear in front of your kids. You've sworn in front of my kids <laughs> on a few occasions. Really? Yeah, in the car. Yeah, that's because you don't tell me when I'm a loudspeaker. <laughs> you stitch me up. <laughs> Not on purpose. Oh, that's a whole different story. Oh, uh, anyway. So they've started dropping the F-bomb. Oh. And what's even more concerning is that they start using it in context where it makes sense. Right. So it's starting to become a genuine part of their language. Okay. So we made up a new rule, which is very much an old school rule, and I reckon I had it as well. And if it wasn't this, it was probably the mustard in the mouth. Yeah. So, righto, next person that says the F word, yeah. soap in the mouth, and you've got to rinse your mouth out, and we've got to wash it clean. Wow. Which is very, very drastic. And I think part of the kids are like, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Yeah. You won't make us do Do you that. also give your kids the cane? <laughs> 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 hey, what happens in the Hayes household yeah. is private and confidential. Right, okay? I'm sorry. No, I don't. But I copped the cane, by the way. Did you? Different story back at Beckham Public School. Did you really? Yeah, I used to get hit all the time as well. There's oh, a lady on, by anyway. the name of Mrs. Walker, and she oh. still terrorises my dreams. So, on the hand or on the buttocks? On the bottom, yeah. Really? Absolutely. You got caned on the bottom at primary school? Yeah, big time. Goodness. And that was early 90s. Yeah. You can imagine what it was like in like the 70s and 80s. <laughs> What was it like, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> so I took Henry to the driving range on Sunday. He's mad into golf at the moment. Yep. And Dad doesn't play golf very much. And Dad was uh, just having a bit of a, a go at the driver. And it just wasn't working. It right. just wasn't working. There was one particular <laughs> moment where Dad gave himself some really harsh feedback. Yeah. And I think he said the F word twice. Yeah, right. And little eagle-eared Henry said, what did you say? Did you say the F word? Yep. <laughs> um, and these kids don't forget, as you know. Mm. And then that night when we got home, Henry, out of nowhere, said, in front of mum as well, he knew exactly what he was doing, <laughs> you said the F word and you said that if we say the F word, you got to wash our mouth out with soap. So here you go. And he brought a soap dispenser over to me. <gasps> what? And pointed it towards my mouth. <gasps> oh, my God. And this was one of those moments I thought, oh, jeez, do I lead by example or do I say, not tonight, son, I'm not in the mood. Yeah. So I had to cop a mouth full of soap, swish it around <gasps> and then spit it out in front of the sink. And making sure that both my kids were watching. Really? Yeah. Went wow. down that path. What sort of soap was it? It was wasn't, one of those hand wasn't, soap things. Wasn't the really nice soap, was here, it? Here, here, smell. <laughs> Lavender. <laughs> <laughs> Swear again. <laughs> Quick score check, please. It is currently 8-5 in favour of yours truly. That's okay. Big old comeback. You started the year so well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you really, your form has been awful. But oh, we had two weeks off. So I assume that you went off to Gold Coast to do this little bit of a training camp, which you did because you were hassling buskers yelling out the songs that they were playing. See the look on my face right now? That's my mum look when my kids annoy me. That is my absolute mum look like... Yep. That's enough. Is You've that what that look too is? Far. You uh, you give me that look very, regularly. very regularly. <laughs> <laughs> What's all that about? Look, it's been a couple of weeks, so I'm expecting big things from both of you as the official adjudicator. Mm. Jodes, I know you've been rehearsing. That's great. Hazy, hopefully your ego has come down a, a notch or two. Excuse and we me can very play much. a wholesome, fun family game. Of songs to song, song, song. It's song. called confidence. It's called confidence, sweetie. Well, Joe, <laughs> speaking of confidence, this will get you going. Yeah. First caller through today was Natalie from Happy Valley, and she picked you, oh, Team Jody. Thank you, nice Nat. Nat. Oh, thanks, Nat. 
I'm sure you were practicing in the break, Jodie. Thank yeah. you, Nat. Absolutely. And I, I appreciate you. your sympathy sort of selection this morning as well. I don't I think really it was sympathy. That. No, 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 no. It's confidence. I think it was faith. And Look how nervous you are, by the way. Oh, man. Dan- Daniel from Langhorn Creeks on Team Hazy today. Hey, Daniel. Daniel. Boy. Let's go, horse. We got Let's this. Let's go. Yeah, come on, horse. Mm-hmm. All right. That's what it's all, about. Uh, all right. It is okay. the same as always. Three songs, Nova hits and throwbacks, orchestralised. You just got to get the best of three. That's yep. all you have to do. Should we rip in? We should rip in. Song Let's number go. one, please. Viva La Vida. Hazy said his name first. Hazy, what's your guess? I believe it's Coldplay. Viva La Vida. <laughs> oh, Jones, I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you forgotten how to play this game, oh, Jones? Oh, Jones. <laughs> I just got so excited that I, I knew know. It. I'm sorry. I forgot my name. Do you know how much <laughs> I wanted to pay that to you? <sighs> Why does okay. everyone hate me so much in this space? All right. The only no, person just... in the world that likes you right now is Daniel from, from, <laughs> from Langhorn Creek. From Langhorn Creek. I... No, it's not that I don't like you. It's just Joe's just then looked like a kid at Christmas. She was really excited. Well, I'll tell you what, she opened up her presents the night before and she got in trouble, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> There's redemption. And I, I feel, I'm feeling good about this one. Song number two, please. Come on. Oh. Jody. Yes? Go on. I Want It That Way by Backstreet Boys. Good girl. Wow. <laughs> That was good. I was never eating it. I'd still be missing right now. Didn't get that. Jokes. No, I didn't that, get that to, at all. To me, that was the easiest one of the day. Yeah, right. Yes. Good song too, by the way. Yes. Sing it out. I want it Jerry's way. <laughs> all right, here we go. See, like, I love when see, this happens. That could have been, should have been a clean sweep. But anyway. But instead, we get an epic tie break. Oh, I hate Ooh, this. Yes. I love this. Ooh, grrr, song number three, oh. please. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, Fallout Boy, I thanks for the memories. I hate you. Okay. I hate you. I hate you. Thanks for the memories. Now the score goes to nine. But Jody, you still suck at this. Oh, it's oh. all fun and games, Joe. Don't take it so seriously. That's but also, how about that, Danny boy? Yeah. <laughs> Good work, you big beautiful man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As if my ego wasn't already oh. inflated in this space. I know. That's a Wallace family pass for uh, Daniel from Langhorn yeah. Creek. He's yeah. off to the movies. Daniel, I'm sorry, Natalie. This could have all gone very different <laughs> had I remembered my name. <laughs> Just Jody, oh. why didn't I? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh, good, Daddy. You did, you did, you did your best. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wasn't quite good enough, was it? <laughs> You've set yourself right. up for an epic comeback story arc. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't I? Mm. Great yeah. arc. Everyone Watch this like, space. Everyone mm. loves an underdog. Don't they? Don't they? You are very much the underdog. I think next week you're paying about nine bucks. Am given I? recent form. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're so angry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well I'm done, not, Hazy. I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed yeah, in myself. Worse. Do you know what? I'm feeling so good. I just want to be generous. How about I give away some live golf tickets <laughs> next to have it on Hazy? <laughs> oh, I'm such an arrogant wanker. There's another ping. He gets it. Houston again. Kid looks brilliant. Houston, we don't have a problem. Please welcome to the Jody and Hazy show, Dan Houston. Ah, uh, yes, Dan Houston. Welcome back. It's been a while. It has, it has. Happy holidays to you too. Thank you so much. Um, Dan, I was in Melbourne on the weekend and I was going to the netball, not your football game, unfortunately. Lucky and we come. No, we were walking to uh, John Kane Arena, which is next to where you were playing, and all the Pies supporters were pouring out of the ground and I felt awful uh, as a port supporter and I felt awful for you as a player. It must have felt pretty terrible in the aftermath. Yeah, it did. It was a. Uh, we got off to a good start, and I thought the Pies fans might leave here. And then, um, no, they stuck around to the end, and, and we, t- um, you know, dished out a, a not so great three quarters to finish the game. And, and they played really well, and um, you know, credit to them, they were too good. And yeah, we'll, we'll try and bounce back this week. He said, like, "What the hell?" I'm just going to say this. I'm going to be very open and honest because that's what we do with you. <laughs> um, end of the first quarter, they pegged it back to 17 points. You thought, oh, "Okay, that's fine." Uh, Port is going to reestablish himself in the second. I was at Channel Seven. I went to the toilet, I had a bit of a sit, and I came back, and you were two goals down in the blink of an eye. 
Well, that's Collingwood for you. I guess they, they can score really quickly, but, um, you know, we, we've looked at the game and, and we weren't good enough in, in a few areas and, and that'll cost you. And, you know, when you come back from the toilet, um, yeah. the score can look like that. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, sometimes you go to the toilet for about 25 minutes. And that's what happened. I, yeah. just thought I really sort of eased myself in. I thought I, I checked my phone thinking that uh, Port would be back by, by 30 and all mm. of a sudden, those bloody pies. Oh, they'll get you. Hey, um, we were talking this morning about uh, what you'd want to be when you when you grew up. Hugh says off the back of uh, just sort of reveal. Catherine Benell Pegg, um, <laughs> yeah, the astronaut. astronaut. Like, uh, as a small child, who goes, I want to be an astronaut? Catherine did. 100%. And sure enough. And we also listed, in particular, the things that I wanted to do, and I didn't achieve any of them, but what did you want to be when you were a kid? Well, no, I, can you please tell Dan who, what you wanted to do as a child? I wanted to be the front man of E17. Right, 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 do you even know what E17 is, Dan? No it's boy band. No, it's, 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 yeah. no, no clue. clue. No clue. No, I guess I guess for me, I always did want to be a sports um, player in some aspect. I used to love, absolutely love cricket, and um, one of my favourite players was was Andrew Simons. And um, oh, yeah. my girlfriend Steph was was talking to mum, and mum's like, "Oh, can I tell you a story about Dan when he was growing up? He used yeah. to have this this cat called Gardy, and used to put zinc on him <laughs> to make him like Andrew Simons. So that's what I wanted to be, something like Andrew Simons. But if it wasn't me, I was going to make it my cat. Yeah. Um, and now I play footy, and the cat's no longer here. There was, oh. <laughs> there, was, there was no way in the world that we could have predicted that you were going to talk about putting zinc on your cat. <laughs> no, no. At least your cat never got sunburnt too. Yeah, no, that's true. Very that's true. But, uh, yeah, I can't be whipping out those stories, Mum, in front of other people. No, yeah. exactly right. But you always wanted to be a sportsman. Yeah, in some aspect, yeah. Yeah. Um, I need to ask you about something on Instagram this week. Yeah. And so you've, you've touched on your girlfriend who lives interstate, yes? Yeah. Um, there was a photo on your Instagram story this week of her. Yeah. <laughs> Quite pretty. Predictable. Yeah. <laughs> um, was that like a hard launch of the relationship? Oh, I reckon I reckon it would be a I reckon it would be a hard launch. Not like the hardest, but hard and then I reckon <laughs> there was a few soft launches before, so it's yeah, strategically played. There yeah. you go. Okay. <laughs> because what what we will say, we won't go into specific names, but uh, I was upstairs. Big company, five double A and Nova. I think I saw all the girls sort of crowd around and looking at your story. Ah, <laughs> and one of the, really? that's an absolute one, lie, Hazy. One of the comments I heard was, yes. "Bloody hell, she's gorgeous." <laughs> <laughs> nah, she is. She's very pretty. So very lucky, man. Where'd yeah. you meet? Uh, we actually met at my mate's wedding. So I was in the I was in the um, the bridal party um, of my mate, and she was in the bridal party of um, yeah, right. his his wife now. Classic, so, yeah, a bit of a classic, classic. bridesmaid story, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Right. How how many months have you been together? Uh, I've been seeing her for about oh, close to five months now. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, isn't that interesting? He's like five months. It was my 13 year anniversary today, and I completely forgot. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> the difference between a new relationship and an old one. Oh, in the absolute honeymoon phase. Mm. Um, Secure Friday nights, big stage, of course, the Anzac Round weekend, and also one of your old mates' hundredth. Riley Bonner plays his hundredth game AFL game. Um, are you just going to give him a little cheeky one just to uh, remind him of, of what it could have been, even though he got there listed by the club? Potentially. He's, he's a good mate of mine and he plays down the other end of the ground and, um, you know, I'm, I might be a chance not to say a word to him all night, but, um, you know, he did flag this 100th game to us for a while um, oh. if, if, he, if he played every game. So he'll be looking forward to it and no, no doubt we'll try and upset it. And if we do cross paths, I don't, I'm actually not too sure what I'll do yet. Yeah. yeah, Dan, we have to let you go upstairs to 5AA and break all the sales girls' hearts. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to let you go. But thank you so much for coming in and good luck on the weekend. Thanks for having me. Cheers. I didn't realise today was a significant date. Oh, my gosh. What happened? So I just got a text message from my husband this morning and it said, Happy anniversary. <laughs> oh, my God. 13 so, years. Come on. 13 blissful years for him. So, look, let's just, let's just explain the roles in terms of who's the organised one and who's the one who's just a oh, little man. bit of an airy fairy in Mate, your relationship. You can work Greg. it out. Yeah, I know. I just want you to say it. But, I mean, uh, actually, I'm going to put this back on him because was it written in the family calendar? No, oh, it wasn't. My gosh. So, now you're trying to gaslight him. No, I'm not. But it is his fault that I didn't remember the anniversary because one job, write it on the calendar. Right, okay. Mm. Mm. Um, so how did this conversation take place? Obviously, the first message comes from him. And then yes. what's your response back to him? Oh. Did you admit that you didn't know or do you play along the whole time like no. I was testing you this morning? No, I just played along nicely. Yeah. 
and I just said, um, it, uh, he said, it's our wedding anniversary, 13 years, that's a solid effort. You are very lucky, <laughs> is what he said to me. And I said, happy anniversary. I am the luckiest girl in the world. You are also a very lucky man. Are we celebrating? Mm. And then he sent something back that I can't describe on air. <laughs> what did he send back? What do you mean? What's going on here? It was a picture. Picture oh. of what? Like a love heart? Yeah. Let's run with that. In a way. <laughs> <laughs> For mummies and daddies. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Leave you with that. Let's talk at Megan Trainer. Because you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass. No. Trouble. Some real solid boppy songs, doesn't she? You have some real thoughts about Megan Trainer's style of music, but we'll leave them for off air. Do I? <laughs> you do. Is it positive or You've negative? You've voiced them before. Can't even remember. Not overly positive. Oh, well, anyway, she has a newborn, and she's given it an outrageously Aussie-themed name. Okay, don't call it it. No, given it, the baby. He, not she's given him. Thank you. Oh no, an outrageous Aussie name. Mm-hmm. Um, think of the most, I'm not going to say ochre, but what are the names that you don't think that you would ever see a baby Australian ever again? Bruce. Bruce. Mm. Spot on, Jones. Oh, is that right? His name is Barry Bruce. Stop. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's doubled down. She's not just Bruce. Barry and Bruce. Because there was a little thing not too long ago as well about uh, Barry's being almost extinct. Yes. And no one's calling their babies Barry. No. Anymore. She also revealed as well that she was motivated uh, by Bruce the Shark from Finding Nemo. Hello. Hello. Well, hi. Name's Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that's the motivation for Megan and her little toddler. He will be Barry Bruce and he will probably have no trouble in his class because he will be the only Barry. Mm. There'll be no confusion uh, like with my kids. Uh, turns out Henry and Charlotte were very, very <laughs> popular names. There's yeah. three Charlottes in Charlotte's little ELC class. Is there really? Yeah. A few Henrys as well? There's two Henrys in his class. Yeah, okay. So Lot- uh, Charlotte goes by Lottie so yep. we can genuinely identify her. There are some names that you just think, oh, we won't hear them again in a baby sense. Oh, I thought 100% it would be Barry. Mm. But here you go. Yeah, or Barry, Bruce. Barry Bruce. Yeah. Some beautiful Bruce's as Imagine well. Imagine when they're in trouble. Barry Bruce. <laughs> Bruce. We've really got to double down. <laughs> yeah. um, some names that uh, surely you won't, see, you won't see again. Ian. Ian. Like a baby Ian. You can literally... you imagine a little oh, beautiful baby Ian? I cannot begin to tell you how much you just read my mind then. <laughs> Ian came, like, to my frontal lobe right then, and you said it. Ian is the name of a grown-up who probably has a little bit of a pot belly. Yep. Uh, maybe enjoys a side of tennis on the weekend. Slightly but balding. Def- def- slightly balding. Mm-hmm. Works in the office. Mm-hmm. Good family man, though, is Ian. He is, Ian. Mm-hmm. Um, he also likes to dabble in chess. Yes, mm-hmm. 100%, because he's a thinker. Yep. He's a smart guy. What about a little baby Paul? <laughs> <laughs> There's no baby Paul's ever getting around ever again. No, there's not. Surely. Oh, look at it. It's so beautiful. What's its name? Mm. Uh, Paul. Excuse me? I don't... I mean... I'm sorry. Paul, is your baby an accountant? (laughs) (laughs) This is on the edge. But do you think there's going to be a lot of baby Darren's? Oh, yeah. I don't think so. Okay. I'm not sure that Darren's on the hot list right now. I think Darren's been done. What about the Ain family? We're talking Kane, Shane, Dwayne, (laughs) Blaine, all the Ains. (laughs) (laughs) There could be a few new baby canes, I reckon. You think? I'm just not sure about Dwayne. Oh, and how d- much d- goodness has Dwayne the Rock Johnson done for the baby name Dwayne? But also baby canes, they're controversial. Yeah, they're controversial now. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Cornsy. <laughs> 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 Can we do this? Yeah. Some of those old school names, mm. do you know of someone who's got a baby with these original names which you thought were probably going to get extinct? Yeah. 13, 24, 10, please get involved this morning. Those names that we just don't see anymore in babies. Yeah. Mm. Norma, um, that's a traditional <laughs> name in itself. Isn't it? Uh, yep, thank you. <laughs> um, your daughter, Norma, what's her name? Beth. Beth, that's good. How yes. old is Beth? She's 14. She's 14. 14. Is it Elizabeth or just Beth? Plain Beth. Plain old Beth. Beth. Okay. Yep, she's a Beth Jade. Beth Jade. And I'm a Norma Jean. Yep, and I'm a Norma Jean. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That works. Okay, but you don't see many baby Normas anymore, do you? Uh, no, no. I've never come across one. Um, the only Normas I come across are, uh, yeah, well, 
very, very mature. <laughs> they're they're yeah. mature age. Right? Norma Plummer, <laughs> former head coach oh, of the Diamonds. There you go, of course. Yeah. I was just about to say that too, Joe. No, you that. weren't. You <laughs> definitely weren't. You were not about to make a netball reference, <laughs> not under any circumstances. Well, who would have thought? <laughs> hey, uh, Norma, has Beth got any friends yeah. around her age that are also called Beth? Like, is it a very, is it a rarity? There is no. No, mm. not at all. Oh, okay. okay. Go. Let's go to Amber. What's your son's name, Amber? My son's name is Paul. That's the one. I've got a John as well. We were just You've saying. got a who as well? I've got a John as well. John and Paul. John oh, and Paul. Beautiful traditional uh, names. Mm. I think. And my father is Darren. There you go. <laughs> Darren. <laughs> oh, my God. So, what about I'm so you, sorry, Amber, Amber, with your radical name, Amber? You're just sort of straying away. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. We offended each and every one of your children just before. Oh. I've got a page. I've got a bit of a modern one. I've got a page. Okay. Page. Yep. Page, page is, is nice. Modern. Hey, um, Amber, we'll take us through it. Um, the motivation behind the name Paul, where did it come from? Because I just Paul can't imagine very- too many other 11-year-olds being called Paul. No, there's not. And he's got autism and he's very aware that he's the only Paul. Yeah. Aww, That's boys. awesome. He's uh, unique. He's- Paul is actually from his great-grandfather that passed away before he was born. Right. Yeah, right. There you go. Okay. Mm. Um, Abby, in the newsroom, you've got an idea for a very, very good name, which (laughs) you don't reckon will probably make a comeback soon? I feel bad because a friend of mine, her partner's called this, um, Nigel. I know a couple of Nigels. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean... Great people. Yeah, but the the old Nigel no friends. Yeah. That's kind of... And also... It's like Karen's, isn't it? It's well, just yeah. been tainted forever. Well, it's not fair. Just Over in the UK, a pub held a festival because Nigel officially became extinct in 2022. 20, uh, so so are you no, saying that no Nigels? No, were... Nobody named their son Nigel between 2016 and 2020. So it was wow. officially, there's no Nigels. Four left years, no Nigels. Yeah. Wow. Huge. Yeah. So they had a party. They had a, they had a night, <laughs> you know what they called it? A Nige fest. <laughs> <laughs> It's I like, want to go to the night. It's like Abfest, but better. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's good. Okay, let's go to Grace. What's your baby called? His name is Bruce Williams. <laughs> Bruce, how old? He's three. He's three years three. old. Why Bruce, Grace? Um, well, I named our first child together, me and my husband. Yeah. And we said, well, I'm going to name the second one and came up with Bruce. Right. And um, that's how it's been. Do you know any other baby Bruce's? No, I don't. But he goes to childcare, and there's Larrys, and there's Wilfreds, and there's Freds, and they've all been bunched together. I got Wilfred. They all hang out together. Wilfred and Larry. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love that little posse. There's Bruce and Wilfred and Larry, and they're all on the swings, just oh having the best gosh. time ever. What a bunch! Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Hey, Teresa. Hey, how you going? Good, good. Okay, hit us. Husband's name's Wayne. <laughs> Brother-in-law's name's Ian. There you Brother-in-law's go. Brother-in-law's name's Albert. Albert. <laughs> there you go. What a trio. Oh, Seriously. They are a, a trio. That's amazing. <laughs> that's perfect. Beautiful, yeah. strong, traditional names. That's so much. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> so have you got uh, have you got any kids, Teresa, or if you had future plans for your kids, any of these traditional names on the horizon or we try something new and funky? I have three kids, and they're Aiden, Madeline, and Zachary. No, oh, yeah, yeah, they're <laughs> okay. cool names. Yeah. They're cool names. Yeah, yeah. Pretty <laughs> funky. Oh yeah. goodness me! We genuinely apologise to all the people we've offended <laughs> yeah. in the last segment.